morning all of you you have seen uh, or you have attended the last two days classes right yes. so at least you will have some kind of basic idea of whatever we have discussed so as i said listening is very easy remembering or understanding things are very difficult so <clears throat> all i want you to do is take a white paper or a notes or whatever okay and try to think of these questions just think uh, if you have attended the last two classes <coughs> or as suggested if you have read yesterday's newspaper if you know if you don't know a single point in this entire sheet it's totally fine if you know that is fantastic uh, if you have read it in the newspaper if you can recollect it that is even better all right don't write the question just the answer because questions uh, get updated right it's a time waste first first 10 next we will discuss at next 10 okay so first go for the first 10 what is euthanasia what is albedo effect what is data localization first ten just to the first ten we will discuss the next ten after this so if you have attended the classes uh, these are the points we have discussed and these are from yesterday's and day before yesterday's only every point we have touched briefly and question you can answer what is the question what about the rest over the online people if you don't interact i cannot read your minds unless you know i am professor x from x men series i cannot read your minds right you have to open up you have to talk you have to let me know where you stand yesterday i discussed the data localization topic for around 20 25 minutes so in spite of that if you don't know what is data localization maybe you thought you understood but you didn't <coughs> any in the last two questions what is the difference between migrant and a refugee okay. yes any yeah how many out of 10 nine questions which one you haven't what is euthanasia in the paper chadara पेपर लाइना Six. Six. Oh. Four. You haven't. Which four? One. Eighth one. Hmm. Sixth one. Uh huh. Hmm. And? I'm not sure about second. You are not sure about second one. So now uh, the revelation, right? So where did these questions come from? these questions came from this article okay <clears throat> so this was the article i told you is very important so what the very first thing is he says about anthropogenic forces are human induced so i told you right anthro means human cosine is this human, human induced climate change okay next uh so there is a concept called as albedo okay so th- i think there are the next 10 questions right next uh, who gave that report ipcc report intergovernment panel 
for climate change i told you that second uh, sixth question right who gave that report i did mention explicitly yesterday if you remember that diagram we are moving towards 1.1 1.5 itself is disaster two is hollywood movie i told you right yeah, this so IPCC, right? Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change. What is albedo effect? Albedo effect means the reflection of the sunlight. Okay, that effect is sunlight. Hmm, sorry, that is albedo effect. What do you mean by data localization? Storing data or locating the servers within the geographical boundary of that particular region is data localization. Fourth one, all of you must have remembered. Osaka, Osaka track. track. Okay, so it is about Osaka track. Now, what is the fifth question? Again, if you have read this article, here he clearly she clearly writes one paragraph like permafrost dying of Arctic. Okay, uh, is releasing carbon and methane. So I told you right. Already ice is covered. It is releasing more ice. Okay. Next, uh, viruses will be released. That is one more threat. Diseases and viruses might come back. So like this, you see, reading is one thing. Next day, recollection is a whole different thing. Uh, when we listen everything, when I say or when you read, it feels like I know this. Why can't I know this much? Okay. But the problem comes in recollection. Okay. Anthropocene, we have covered. Hmm. Now, the difficult questions. See, if you don't know what is albedo effect, it's geography concept. You are supposed to know, but it's fine. Hmm? Euthanasia, you don't know. Globalization, you don't know. And technical definition of migrant and refugee, I haven't discussed, but you can guess commonsensically what is migrant, what is, or who is refugee. And this question, 10th question, how do you know? Hmm. In yesterday's Hindu, there is an editorial. Okay, so first we will start with euthanasia. Okay, euthanasia is assisted suicide. Okay, euthanasia means assisted suicide. In India, there is no active euthanasia. It is only passive euthanasia. Say, haven't discussed, but it is there in the paper, right? At least you should keep an eye on what are the ethical things. See, this comes under GS paper 4. Okay. Uh, in GS paper 4, uh, there is a concept. See, if somebody is terminally ill, that means he is very sick. He cannot move. He is totally dependent on medicines. His everyday survival is a threat. Then he can request the government, please allow me to die. Okay. So, uh, uh, allow me to die means I cannot tolerate this pain and there is no cure for me. Even if you keep my life for next 20 years also, this, this is, disease is not going to get better. Okay. So that is euthanasia. Hmm? Uh, it is, I, it is available in different Western countries. In Western countries, they say it's okay to die if you have terminally ill diseases. Okay. But India said, our Indian Supreme Court said nothing doing. We won't allow euthanasia because India is a poor country. Some auto driver or some poor person will go and say, I cannot take care of my mother. She's 85 years old. She's paralysis patient, something, something. Please allow her to die. Okay. More cases will come. So, euthanasia is assisted suicide. Okay. Legally assisted suicide. In India, we have passive euthanasia. That means it should be really rarest of the rare case. And the medical board should say, yes, this person does not have any future whatsoever. Only then it is allowed. Okay. So, in this particular case, that person wants to travel to a different country to take the help of assisted suicide okay so at least knowing the meaning is the dot next time if you see euthanasia you should be able to recollect it is about assisted suicide it is there in ethics paper applied ethics okay it also comes under gs paper 2 that is quality law yes because constitution says no law, no man should be deprived of his life except through legal means yes or no that is right to life to liber life and liberty hmm? So that is one thing from euthanasia. See, all these things, all the questions came from newspapers only. Hmm. Then where is that editorial? In the editorial, there is a very clear line which says India has respected and followed the UN convention, but India is not a signatory. So if you are unable to recollect, that means you don't, you didn't know that where you have to substantiate. See, I told you on the day one, right? 
editorials means arguing through empirical data how will a newspaper criticize the government the newspaper is criticizing the government saying it is not a signatory you are not a signatory but we are following it okay that means i am following it in letter and spirit without legal obligation that shows india's goodness okay so that is one thing so what is sixth question uh, who IPCC. gave ip uh, ipcc report i said it in a flow maybe you, you miss it the attention or it's it's totally fine if you don't know it is not printed uh, second is also there in this particular article you are supposed to know hmm? in this article he clearly defines what is albedo effect what is lapse rate everything next uh, the last one is the difference between migrant and a refugee technically speaking a migrant can be internal migrant and external migrant right somebody uh, coming to a different part of the land or different country either through legal means or illegal means legal migrants can be there illegal illegal migrants will also be there see you are you are taking a tourist visa and going to usa for work permit or something you are a migrant right okay but if you stay beyond visa then you are a illegal migrant or you can cross the mexican border and enter into usa then also you are a illegal migrant okay migrant legal and illegal refugee is someone who is escaping war life persecution uh, or circumstances okay climate refugees disaster refugees that means your entire village has been swept away by floods okay you are moving to the next district or next state or next country you are a climate refugee climate because of climate you are a refugee you are a refugee of war okay so refugees are people who are escaping something they are not going to a different country by choice they are being forced migrant is a choice okay as a migrant i have a choice i am looking for a better opportunity why am i going to usa for a better job okay what about refugees bangladesh refugees okay 1971 war they were forced to come to india or else if they stayed in pakistan bangladesh or east pakistan they would have been killed okay uh, myanmar or rohingyas rohingyas are also refugees they are not coming to india for tourist destination but because of life threat okay so that is that okay so did you recollect if you have recollected all the 10 points then you are doing fantastically well uh, if you don't know that that's totally fine again as i said this is a class of learning not a class of judgment i don't judge you by not knowing or you, you you don't even know this no that is not the point the point is to make you see the importance of newspaper and how many topics are there okay and this topic covers c gs paper 4 okay this is gs paper 1 this is gs paper 2 and 3 like this every day all the four gs papers are covered directly or indirectly all we need to do is understand the concepts so when you one day read environment and biodiversity chapter that day you already know what is anthropocene or what is climate change your understanding will be even quicker okay <clears throat> one topic i haven't said is what is globalization okay this is important for your gs paper 3 and society point of view okay and ss also what is globalization understanding the local culture they adapt to the according to the local culture and they can take the example of kfc mm-hmm. according to the tastes of the local <coughs> they make see globalization plus localization is globalization global plus local is global okay see that means if you go to uh, burger king or mcd anywhere in the world it is supposed to be like same right standardized coca cola is standardized okay throughout the world it will taste same it will look same it will feel same that is the target but if you come to india okay there is a season called as navratri season where people don't eat onion and garlic okay during that period i cannot sell my same burger i have to adapt to the local conditions okay so then that is first time where mcdonalds have introduced this make aloo tikki burger that means aloo tikki all of you know like that is a street side chat and burger all of you know so he is mixing burger plus aloo tikki make aloo tikki so the company was forced to adapt to indian taste so mcdonalds so uh, sorry kfc sells uh, lemon rice biryani kfc sells biryani now 
Okay, why? Local local people are used to eat biryani. I am a KFC company, right? I have my own product and they have their own taste. So I need to fuse. So forcing companies to adapt to local preferences is globalization. That is a phenomenon that clearly shows that any society needs to adapt. Sorry, any company needs to adapt to the local needs. Only then they will survive. Okay, outrightly you cannot bring the Western model and say it will work in India. That is called as globalization. It is an important concept in GS paper three economy because without globalization, uh, companies won't survive. Okay. So here, paneer, makani, burger, or any kind of food items. Okay, all these concepts are globalization. Global plus local. Burger is a global food. Uh, paneer, makani is a local food. Yes. So again, see this is just one understanding on how things uh, work. We don't know how knowledge will come. Let knowledge come from all sides, right? Knowledge will keep on coming. Hmm. So this is an article from yesterday's newspaper. If you have missed this article, you need to understand. As I told you, evolving issues. What are evolving issues? The other day, a local court judge has criticized a woman for wearing a provocative dress. So she, he is blaming the victim. That is institutionalization of patriarchy. See, patriarchy itself is an institution. You need to understand the term institution. Institution means it has been set into a system. It is a systemic thinking. People will start thinking in patriarchal lines. I don't even know I'm a part of patriarchy. I will follow patriarchy. What is patriarchy? Male domination or male, super, male superiority. So if some if a if a son is born and brought up in a patriarchal family, the sister is always treated as a second class citizen. Okay, he doesn't think that it's a uh, you know bad thing. He will grow up thinking it's okay to treat women as a second class citizen, right? Uh, so, uh, this particular judge probably is a part of such patriarchal system where his mind thinks, you know, it is the woman who, who should be blamed for this sexual harassment case, right? And here, one more term is woke society. Woke. What is woke? See, it's a, it's a new millennial term that like people who are born after 2000s are called as millennials, right? Okay, millennium changed, millennials. So they use this term for uh, up, um, updating the society's morality. Woke, woke means wake enlightened. up, uh, enlightened, kind of enlightened, okay? So uh, let's say, I don't know, I, I'm, I, do, I didn't knew that I was a part of patriarchy. I made a very common statement against women, very casually. Then people will come and give me lecture on social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Then that society is woke. Woke means enlightened, awake. Okay. So uh, Kerala have a lot of demography, youth, lot of young, youngsters are there. Okay. So recently what happened in Kerala, uh, uh, there is a steel bench in the bus stop. So three, three people were sitting, two girls and one boy or something. Someone uh, like they were sitting side by side. So then this right wing groups will be there, right? The, who wanted to have some morality. Okay, we need to understand the term morality here. Morality means what is the meaning of the word moral? Morality means judging something as good and bad. See, if I say something is good, that is moral or moral according to me. Okay, you are wearing such a kind of dress. Morally, I agree. You are wearing a skirt or something. Morally, I disagree. So, morals can be for individuals. Morals can be there for society. Morals can be there for constitution. Okay, if, if constitution says something is good, that is constitutional morality. If constitution says something is bad, that is constitutional morality again. So according to constitution, this is good. This is bad. According to society, this is good. This is bad. According to individual, this is good. This is bad. So here a particular group can have a morals, right? Uh, culture, based on culture, a group can have a morals. So in Indian society, men and women are separate. You should not mingle freely. Okay, then all the three college students were sitting on one bench. The next day morning, they broke the bench. They broke the steel bench saying, you know, you should sit separately, separately. You should not sit side by side. This happened in 2022 May uh, or July, uh, one month ago. Then what did... The Kerala, how did the Kerala youth respond? The Kerala youth responded by laptop. Laptop moment. That means they sat on the lap of the male friend. 
okay there is only one bench right the male friend sat on the bench and the girl sat on his lap saying we are friends we don't attach this you know traditional norm of you know not uh, holding hands or all those things okay so that is that is a oak reply to a very old thought process so india is a paradox country of paradoxes right and on, on the one side we are very sanskari and the other side we are very oak like we have both the things who is to decide what is good what is bad see there are cases where men men can take advantage of a female friend right so she is friendly i can take advantage of her i miss you rape might happen or some some immoral acts might happen then at the same time they can be genuine friends but if you treat everybody with the same lens you are actually forcing people to think in a opposite direction and if you go to a teenager and say you know don't do this they will exactly do that okay there is a way to explain them okay you can be very friendly with anyone but you need to maintain some lines boundaries and that lesson should be taught to both men and women right not only women you should not only restrict women you should tell men also or the boys also you should behave well something something but these kind of discussions don't happen so this happens in kerala okay in such a society when the judge says something automatically there will be a lot of repercussions okay <clears throat> and that is also wrong right and the problem here is when a judge says something it is not about the judge it is about the judiciary itself it is as good as saying the judiciary has said that it is a problem of the women okay so now here individual society moralities are crashing with in individual morality that not constitution see constitution clearly says whatever you want to do you can do it constitution is very clear interpretation of constitution is wrong it is a fault of the judge right now kerala high court has to come and say no that is a very wrong on the part of the judge okay <clears throat> every article will give you a lot of opportunity to think about the society it is up to us whether we are seeing them and second thing are you in a position to understand all these things if five days down the line if i ask you constitutional morality again if you scratch your head i mean hypothetically then it's not your fault first of all you need to learn what is constitution morality layer by layer by layer you progress okay next hmm. uh india has always uh, okay yeah so sure, sure. i mean we will discuss all these things we will go to the next 10 questions right for understanding sir bit difficult but again but again from newspapers then All ten. Six again. Six again. Lucky number. <laughs> hmm. Which ones you don't know? Eleventh one. Eleventh one you don't know. <coughs> okay. Twenty. Twenty also you don't know. It's there in yesterday's newspaper. You didn't notice. Problem. Hmm. Fourteen, fifteen. Hmm. That is all you know. So what is the answer for seventeen? Okay, eighteen. Hmm. Seventeen is yes, right? It is directly from this article. Mm-hmm. It is there in the article, right? The lapse rate is rate at which drops. temperature drops with the elevation decrease. Okay. So that is what I said in the day one class, right? Reading newspaper is an art. Everybody is an artist. Okay. <laughs> at the same time it's not your fault why you don't know geography you haven't completed you haven't even started ncert right so if you know ncert geography that is when you appreciate newspaper now my theory is proved right like if you know the basics reading newspaper is a cake walk but if you don't know the basics it becomes very difficult so that is why don't worry about understanding everything in the newspaper i will tell you as time progresses you will progress okay 
<coughs> the other line is also directly from newspaper. CI cells no have a high albedo, direct as it is. Hmm? Then, Vasudeva mm Kutumba -hmm. is from the editorial. Okay. Again, Vasudeva Kutumba means whole world is a family. The entire world is a family. It's an Indian philosophy from which Upanishad? It is a line from Upanishad. So which Upanishad has given this line Vasudeva Kutumba Kam? These are the questions that you see. There was a Satyameva Jayate, the India's official motto, right? Okay. Uh, that is from a Upanishad. That is a previous year question. From which Upanishad did that line come from? Not numbers, names. Okay. Yes. So that is what I'm trying to tell you. Slowly, slowly go through the previous questions. Then you see sometimes like Vasudeva Kutumbakam. And probably you will not find an essay in 2022 written by students without the word Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Everybody will use it very freely because Prime Minister Modi used it so many times that it's a philosophy of India. Especially PSIR, IR also, international relations also, we use the same thing. Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That means the entire universe is one family. Our whole world is one family. That means you are not different from me. This is the epitome of compassion. Think about it. What is compassion? Compassion is thinking about others. You see someone sleeping on the road or lying on the road. Okay, you just walk away. But if you imbibe the principle that whole universe is one family, that, that means he's also your family member, then he will you will go to him and talk to him like what happened. Okay, that, that kind of highest compassion can be created through the principle of Vasudeva. Kutumbakam. See, vaccine, Maitri, anything. See, everything India does is through Vasudeva Kutumbakam, right? We believe that, uh, see, again, that they apply selectivity, but fine, yeah. Good examples, Sri Lanka, vaccine, Maitri, Bangladesh, Pakistan, disaster relief in Nepal, everything is Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So that is the importance of the term. Don't underestimate it. Very, very powerful philosophy. Next, uh, what is fiscal deficit? I have explained to you in the class that gap between income and expenditure. Hmm. What about this Great Indian Bustard? Is it there in the newspaper? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Did I mention? Yes, sir. What is IUCN status? Less than 150 left and uh, two mm. eggs are mm. So what you are supposed to remember there is it's critically endangered. Okay, so this is from this particular article. See, again, if you don't know, it's fine. But there is a concept called as uh, <coughs> endangered status. Okay, what is the classification of IUCN classification in red list? Okay, it's an entire book which says if a bird is uh, having a less amount of population, it will be called as critically endangered. Or if, they are, if their entire survival is under threat, it is critically endangered. So that is a lesson. If you go through previous year questions, whenever you see animal names, UPSC will commonly ask you. They will give three or four names and they will say, is it critically endangered, yes or no? So it's a template that you develop. Every time you're in newspaper, if you see some animal's name, for example, here, Great Indian Bustard is a bird. Okay. And that bird is critically endangered according to whom? IUCN. Right now, it is having some changes. So what is happening is decently important, but for film's point of view, what is the IUCN status? Okay, how is it protected? Are is Indian government taking any steps? Where is it found? You will find all these things. Hmm? Okay. So again, this is from newspaper. <coughs> hmm. This is done. So what is not done is uh, the highlighted part, right? Okay, this one is done. This one is done. Hmm. What about the nineteenth question? What is the answer? What? Yes or no? Yes, you must have written yes, you must have written no, I don't know. But again, the answer is planet's average temperature has increased by 1.1 degrees, not 1.5 degrees. 1.5 is a warning. 1.1 is present. So that is why I added the line as of today. As of today, we are only at 1.1, not 1.5. Small details matter. This is how UPSC fools you. Okay, we know 1.5 confirmation bias. We heard 1.5 so many times, we think it's 1.5. Hmm? 
now now moving on to the democracy reformment question where does the reformment question come from hmm. Hmm. good what is reformment <clears throat> something in those lines Mm -hmm. See, this is a main question from 2021 EPSC GS paper 4. Refugees should not be turned back to the country where they would face persecution of human rights violation. Okay. Examine the statement with reference to ethical dimensions being violated by the nation claiming to be a democratic and open society. So he's indirectly criticizing Indian yeah. government in the context of <coughs> what Rohingya refugees. Now, what many people <coughs> who wrote that means did not knew, know is that is the definition of non-refoulement. Okay, non-refoulement means refugees should not be sent back to the country knowing that there will be persecution of human rights. Reform means sending back, non reform means you should not send back because if you send them back, they will be killed. So, knowing that they will be killed if you are sending them back, how are you a democratic society? How are you a Vasudeva Kutumbakam? Is that not? Open society means Vasudeva Kutumbakam. And many people would answer to that question without using the word non reform. Okay. So that means when you read what is non reform, you should be able to understand that there is a principle called as non reform. Okay, but at the same time, I want you to remember, uh, see the entire issue is Rohingyas are refugees and specifically they are Muslims. Okay, coming from country like Myanmar to India, there is no cultural similarity. Uh, there is a lot of differences between their approach and our approach. And if they come and settle in India, in future, because of poverty, they might be radicalized. Some of them or one or two of them can be radicalized. That is what is happening in European countries, right? Com communalism is an extreme thing because because Rohingyas are refugees, right? They will be settled in some places, but one or two might escape. See, Rohingyas are there even in Hyderabad. Okay, communalism, I, I doubt it because they will be right, right? You are a refugee. You are already staying as a guest in my country. You cannot have a voice. The state itself will punish you if you raise a voice too much. Okay, but Ha, they might, it, it is more about security threat. Government's argument is national security threat. Okay, they might become radicalized. There is a concept called as a lone wolf attack. Lone wolf attack. Lone wolf attack means, if, let's say you are in Rohingya, 10 people, are like 25 people are staying in one slum. Okay, but one of you have got cell phone something. Obviously, cell phone is an easy thing to acquire, right? So you, you read all these Islamic hating websites, like extreme, extreme, extreme radicalization. Radicalization happened. Then that one person will go and start killing people or become a terrorist or attack something. These kind of things are called as a lone wolf attack. Recently, what happened to Salman Rushdie in USA is a lone wolf attack. Why? Some youth in America was very radicalized. He hated Salman Rushdie. He was willing to take that the risk to kill someone in the name of religion. Okay, what happened in uh, uh, that Kanayalal case in Jaipur, Udaipur or Jaipur? Jaipur, Rajasthan, right? So that case is also an example for radicalization and lone wolf attack. That means here, there, are, there was a company for him, but the thing is, they are radicalized, right? They are random bits and pieces. Okay, earlier terrorists were exported by Pakistan. Now terrorists are being made within our country by radicalization, by brainwashing. The more I brainwash you, you can become a terrorist. You are an Indian citizen and you are working against India. Now you are a Rohingya and you have been radicalized. Then there is no loyalty for you. It is easy for me to brainwash you. So saying all these things, Indian government is saying, I don't want refugees. See, India has a huge amount of legacy of allowing refugees. We have Syrian refugees in 7th century. Vargasi Kurain, uh, the, the milkman. Uh, um, Vargis Kuryan. Vargis Kuryan, yes. So uh, the Amul White Revolution. He is a Syrian Christian, right? Migrants have contributed to this country. Parsis, the Zoroastrians came from Iran and settled in Gujarat coast. So, and there were Jews in Assam. 
okay uh, uh, the, the the tibet bangladesh see it's not like india was not happy to accept refugees right sri lanka all over the world we have accepted afghanistan you see nepal yes, everywhere but now things have changed now technology have radicalized populations groups so it's just national security threat so that is why india is thinking to send them back and uh, the hindu article is criticizing right uh, there is a concept called as uh, union union principles of uh, reformment and india is violating it but the same international law also says national security is an exception to non reformment okay using national security i can violate the non reformment principle also that means i can send them back knowing that they will be killed because my national security is more important to me rather than their life okay so that is a contradiction but again as a nation my my obligation is towards my citizens right i have to protect my citizens first so these are all the points that you have to understand i hope now you understand what is principle of non reformment principle of non reformment means sending back someone in spite of knowing they will be hurt okay so what is the best course of best course of action construct a huge areas where refugees can be stored like camps etc uh detention center patrolling centers so not patrolling uh detention centers and camps okay then talk to myanmar to promise that you know if i send them all back you will not kill them myanmar government has to give that in the promise in writing then there is no harm in sending them back right because they won't be killed they might be jailed but they won't be <coughs> just maintaining law and order right like if you know that police will keep on coming you will not do illegal activities see poverty will push people into a lot of issues things right you can enter into robbing your survival your survival is under threat then you can do a lot of things hmm? okay so that is principle of non reformment it was there in the editorial you are supposed to at least notice that term hmm? so no problem next time when you see the previous questions automatically your brain will remind you next demographic change which article border states told to watch demographic change demography means population right demography demo demos people right people change it can be religion it can be numbers it can be age it can be population uh, sizes okay so here specifically amit shah is saying that please notice demographic changes in border districts see india is sharing huge amount of border with a lot of countries and the borders are porous borders what are what is porous civil barrier no strict prohibition it is not air tight compartment there is some gap there, no matter how strict you are there is some gap for example between india and bangladesh there are 54 rivers just between india and bangladesh there are 54 river, rivers okay and riverine borders are very difficult to man why i cannot put a fence on the rivers right okay uh, Uh, there will be sealed there will be lot of issues so if i am a bangladeshi if i want to come to india i have 54 ways to come in india technically speaking right and hilly and difficult terrains mountains passes i don't know how many possibilities are there desert between india and pakistan all these are porous okay so specifically in bangladesh and assam relations or indian relations what happened is a lot of population came from bangladesh and started settling in assam okay during 1971 war we officially allowed lot of refugees after that also their relatives their friends family members like this influx of uh, illegal migrants came and settled now there used to be a good number of hindu population in assam okay now the demography has changed so much that muslims are majority hindus are minority in some districts so that has become some issue with the local areas because obviously migrants are taking away jobs migrants are getting indian citizens Uh, citizenship benefits they are they are occupying lot of territory so th that has affected the interests of actual local indians yes so that is why amit shah is reminding us that be careful of demographic changes in the border areas that might also lead to security threat see 9 out of 10 refugees who came are 9 10 out of 10 refugees who came are illegal immigrants who came are looking for better opportunities they came for genuine reasons but there might be one person hiding among them who is a terrorist okay he is a national security threat see we have to be vigilant every day but terrorist has to succeed only once yes so that is the problem of national security okay 
and here the term you can learn is a demographic yesterday also i told you probably the same thing if you remember demographic dividend and curse old people are people with skills are a advantage as uh, are a uh, people are brains i told you remember people are brains that is demographic dividend okay what i mean by that is people between the age of 15 to 59 are normally called as demographic dividend they are the working age population working age population working age population is a demographic dividend dividend means what profit right hmm? dividend is a profit that you give extra profit okay so by virtue of 15 to 15 and having more population in india they are supposed to contribute to the economic growth of the nation demographic dividend but what will be the curse when these people want to do any activity then they will become old one day then they will become burden or a curse to the nation yes to understand uh, demographic dividend and demographic curse you can go into the discussion of malthusian theory malthus malthusian theory are you aware of malthusian theory what is malthusian have you ever heard about it in society book it is there hmm good these stages of transformation will be occur in population Random. you are talking about the demographic change that is pyramids demographic age pyramids right hmm. like last is a Malthus, Malthus is a person who gave a theory saying, you know, population is a curse. The more population there is there, that is a burden. Okay, people are burden. It, what you are talking about is the evolution of population cycle, hmm. not the entire cycle. That that has nothing to do with Malthusian theory. Okay, Malthus, Malthus says that population are burden. More the population, less the, I mean, less the growth, less the. Development. Population will only take the resources. They will eat. They are unnecessary burden on the planet. See, if you see Batman movies, Ra's al Ghul, okay, or Dan Brown's novels like the last one, or movies like Thanos. Ah, Thanos. Thanos. Thanos is an example of Malthusian theory. Okay, so all these people believe that that you know people should not be there. Lesser the population, better the progress. but opposite to malthusian theory is people are not stomach people are brain if more human capital is there they will contribute to the planet we have 8 billion population yes or no the world is actually is going to reach 8 billion population very soon 8 billion 800 crore people are there in the planet if 800 crore people actively help each other contribute to each other imagine the wonders we can create that is a, that is a problem imagine right okay uh, so we have the science and technology that the progress the human capital the amount of creativity yes people are not burden people are resource it's our failure to use the resource so malthusian theory is a bad theory so we should not encourage malthusian ideology we should train skill people okay more human capital more money more advantage more development more progress see we don't know which human brain can create what right yes so that is a advantage hmm? so demographic dividend means people are asset to the nation when the people don't contribute they will become burden because today you are youth 30 40 whatever one day you will become 60 at that time if the economy is not strong then what happens it has to take care of your health needs it has to take care of your mental health needs maintain you protect you pension so on and so forth and all these problems are going to increase okay so that is that is about demographic change demographic dividend demographic curse hmm. now the last question what do you understand by plato's allegory of cave which paper which article <coughs> hmm. okay so this is a beautiful article uh, to understand a lot of things and it will also give you imagination if you can think about it in depth okay what is uh see that is what i say right newspaper is not just reading the headlines newspaper is reading between the lines 
reading between the lines is more uh, creative endeavor rather than reading just the lines so what is the first thing i told you on day 1 what should you carry every day syllabus copy right if you know the syllabus copy and if you know the previous questions i think you will appreciate this article better okay um yesterday i was discussing an essay topic with a student uh, the topic was you can evade reality but you cannot evade the consequences of reality think about it you can evade reality but you cannot evade the consequences of reality so you are supposed to write a 1200 word essay on that particular topic okay now there is also uh, a topic called as western philosophers in your ethics paper plato aristotle socrates all these people will be covered in your ethics paper right so in essay ethics and in your overall understanding of indian mythology that is maya the veil yes that will also give you a lot of understanding to write essays and society paper right okay now is this reality a reality whatever you are are you real according to the hindu philosophy the hindu mythology not, not hindu philosophy mythology hindu philosophy okay except god okay except the parabrahma okay everything else is maya if shiva is truth the parvati is maya right okay between them the entire universe is there whatever you are seeing this hand this building this life everything is myth it's it's just an illusion the only truth is the uh, the god right moksha the ultimate enlightenment that means you joining the god is the ultimate reality everything else is a maya okay don't get attached to any of your life that is what krishna says right sthita pragnata the highest mental model as far as i know is all about That's not being attached okay detachable attachment you should not be attached to anything tamaraku meeda neeti pottu that means you should be like a water on the lotus leaf it won't be attached it will smooth very slowly that is indian philosophy indian upanishads will also argue the same thing that there is nothing but god okay what is freedom the one seeking freedom uh, when it starts seeking freedom is freedom yes okay the one who, what am i see i am according to indian dharma what what am i i am a soul locked in a body not the other way around i am not a body with soul i am a soul locked in a body so my sip para brahma okay or uh, bhagwan bhagwan like bhaga bhaga means pieces right bhagwan to why is he bhagwan he if he has been split into so many pieces all the pieces all the pieces combined together is bhagwan the whole is god you are peace your soul is nothing but a part of god right okay even better way for you to understand today in today's world is matrix movie if you see matrix movie it's a very highly philosophical movie okay people see action parts right the slow the slow mo movies but matrix is nothing but code the entire green code is god let's imagine if the entire green code is god the entire matrix the matrix the maya the veil you see is again created using the same code right okay if god is one atom okay the same atom is in all of us so you are not different from god but we have to break that mask to see that reality when you see that you are brahmagnani okay so all these things are already there in our upanishads okay why am i saying this that is exactly what cat plato's allegory of cave also says okay plato's allegory of cave is for them 2000 years ago right 3000 years ago what plato says is actually it is a socratic con socrates says this plato wrote that in a book okay so imagine you you lock three people in a cave okay they are born in that cave they are brought up in that cave okay and they are chained to the cave okay they can only see the wall of the cave they cannot see the entrance of the cave they cannot turn they cannot move okay all they see is they see the shadows okay behind them there is a fire or the door okay through that light will come and the light is reflected on the shadows on the wall so for them the reality is the shadows on the wall okay not the images right okay a dog has walked 
and the dog's dog's shadow is on the wall so these three people have grown up thinking that whatever i see on the shadow is on the wall is reality okay one day what happens is one of that person is released you are free to go out of the cave then he will have a mental shock right cultural shock mental shock that till till that day he started only thinking that you know it's like matrix like neo coming out of that matrix see that is the beauty of the philosophy suddenly you you understood all this is myth only god is real i'm brahmagnani people will call me mad okay is yes or no so there is a madman throwing 500 rupees on the notes he is a madman or are we mad to clinch to the 500 rupee notes is yes or no that is what rajinikanth uh, that baba movie also discusses okay so philosophy indian philosophy is very higher it's us who fail to understand that okay so again why am i telling you all these things i will tell you <clears throat> that that is creative freedom right hmm? so coming back to allegory of cave that person who was released out of the cave now he starts to understand that okay shadows are fake objects are real after few days he goes back to his friends in the cave and he will tell them okay uh, dog is real shadow is fake then what will his friends say his friends will say you are mad and they will violently kick him out he will they will violently kick him out this is the same thing that is happening to societies nowadays is or no no politician is god god is god we cannot worship politicians as god okay our religions are not god our political parties are not god but we are willing we are so deeply in belief that we are willing to kill in the name of ideas more people have been killed in the name of the religion than any any other thing is or no religion is supposed to be a great unifier right crusades if you think about crusades you know the jihad the, the terrorism that is happening now everything is in the, happening in the name of what everything is happening in the name of god and the religion right not the other way around you are not fighting for resources see you all know what harari says this right in 1850 1850 itself either in scotland or in india we killed each other literally with guns for a piece of territory this is my land this is your land this is my, uh, this is ireland scotland switzerland whatever it is right uh, this is india ours our india freedom struggle 1857 the first war of independence 200 years down the line now we have evolved so much as a civilization we vote for brexit brexit Bre- uh, britain right uh, britain wanted to exit from european union so they voted and saying we are going out okay they, nobody killed anyone is or no we fought through battle that means human civilization is evolving we are not the same barbarics right okay we were barbarians but we are evolving every day so people now discuss if i want a separate land i will argue i will vote for you i will i will go for plebiscite or something right i don't kill each other but there are people who still believe that the old ideas are valid i, I if if kanayalal said something against a god okay <clears throat> or the god i am willing to kill him rather than ask him for a debate that civilizational understanding is not coming to everyone because some people are in the veil the maya and they believe that maya is truth okay that consensus building is not happening in the society and the problem is not with one right it's the problem is with the larger society the larger society is not allowing the discussions to break that maya we are actually building our own mayas right we are creating our own versions of the story i created a veil i hate that person why he belongs to a particular religion he hates me why i belong to this religion both of us have veils when will our veils be broken when we have truth when wisdom finds truth right when we have when we break the myth when we break the illusion but what are we doing okay you live in your maya i will live in my maya Oh, that is what we call as echo bubbles or uh, echo chambers echo chamber echo chambers echo means repetition of sound right echo chamber mean i said i hate muslims okay everybody repeats say the same thing that means we are reinforcing each other ideas i am happy to live in my bubble okay they are happy to live in their bubble there is no communication whatsoever between the both the bubbles but all of us live in the same society 
we are the cave men yes or no so how are they different from the cave people or uh, the uh, you know plato's allegory of cave right i am seeing the shadow okay i hate muslims i hate hindus i hate christians or i hate someone else okay i am looking at the shadow and i am generalizing everyone all muslims are bad all hindus are bad all christians are bad i have i have generalized everyone i am living in that illusion and i am happy to live in that illusion if someone with rationality comes and says you know not all muslims are bad not not all pakistanis are bad uh, <clears throat> the anti national chamcha uh, you know prostitute uh, uh, pseudo liberals mm-hmm. right so all these labels are uh, thrown at him and he will even stop saying anything See, Socrates was given him lock for enlightening the uh, youth of the particular uh, generation, right? He was given the poison. The poison is him lock, right? So he was given poison for speaking rational ideas. So speaking truth killed him, right? In today's India or in today's world, religion. If we are fighting in the name of religions, and nobody is. trying to break that veil everybody is happy to reinforce that veil donald trump says uh, you know uh, make america great again migrants are taking our jobs he has promoted the hate that is why the gun culture is very high in usa yes <coughs> you understand so that is a problem the veil the maya is not being broken and it is actually being reinforced using fake news misinformation disinformation every day you see one or other whatsapp message saying it reinforces okay so the problem is again the same upanishads the same hindu uh, sanatan dharma gives a huge amount of scope for uh, vada the debate the argument okay that is why we are an argumentative indian right shankaracharya uh, started in the 7th century the 8th century bc and he traveled the entire country three times on foot okay defeating every other religious scholar or every other person through debate okay he he convinced the others using knowledge he was a argumentative indian right he went there he he debated tooth and uh, nail okay he propounded his philosophy he argued counter argued he defeated and he was able to convince other party that kind of long debates are not happening in the country the entire country is now in a whatsapp forward you see that you know Uh, x has killed y that's all you don't even read the next lines so we are creating opinions on the basis of one line one tweet yes so that is a very dangerous thing the lengthy debate has gone the ability to com- communicate between two individuals or two societies is long friends are fighting now over bjp or congress or bjp am aadmi party bjp hindu muslim right so the the space for public debate has come down we are narrowing our caves okay in such a situation if salman rasdi or nupur sharma or someone else is threatened or kanaiya lal is murdered it's the responsibility of the entire society to say wrong is wrong we should not be hypocrites okay that is where indian constitution shines if x is a citizen of this country x has done some crime x irrespective of whoever she is is thrown into the jail outright okay if x has done wrong throw him in the jail but how do we throw people in the jail is he mla son is he mp son is he politically connected is he hindu is he muslim is he dalit is he st is he christian is he connected uh, you, you you take the labels right you take the networks then if you throw someone selectively and don't throw others okay then you are creating a society which creates only more chaos killing anyone in the name of religion is wrong if if those two people have killed kanaiya lal it is the most outrageous thing and we as a society should condemn it but at the same time if someone was mob lynched over what he eats that is also equally wrong so no okay you can ask him see i don't like you to eat that particular thing because i respect it i will provide you an alternative are you willing to change if he says yes probably which he will okay then that is the debate but directly have taken a bat and started beating him to death why he has suspectedly ate something okay then that has shrinked the democratic discussion space <clears throat> okay that is a problem 
i hope this article makes more sense now wrong is wrong if the society or the world is not hypocritical then this kind of problems won't happen but the world is highly hypocritical when america drops bombs in the name of national security and it has killed countless innocents okay we call it as a superpower yes or no that is a wrong thing who gave you the authority to be the police of the world even if you kill terrorists okay you have to kill the right ones right you cannot kill innocent children in the name of uh, you know eliminating national security and then if china does the same thing then you'll blame china you'll bring pressure on china again two wrongs won't make it a right right then we enter into what about three what about three means what did he do there is a concept called as what about three if 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 i discuss you know Uh, the rapists in gujarat are being released then the immediate question is why are rapists in telangana given bail so we are happy to discuss two idiots but none of us are bothered about the actual issue that is the rape case rape case is the issue there right not the religion that is a core problem but what the society have moved to to a point where we are happy to discuss what about that see uh, if to the if, if congress has you know 2002 gujarat riots then what will immediately bjp respond 1984 uh, delhi riots okay under you that riots happened no why are you discussing that okay compromise if you have skeletons in my lab, uh, you know cupboard i have skeletons both of us have skeletons so it's better to be silent yes right so again again i am saying see you can also criticize or discuss about indian gods if i say salman rushdie can criticize uh, quran or satanic verses can be written i should also have the mindset to say you can write something about ramayana or mahabharata also but i will have the right to disagree with you right as long as it is you know uh, rational not outright hate as long as it is it promotes critical thinking i will i should be able to entertain it if today the entire community comes and says salman rushdie i support salman rushdie i support salman rushdie i hate that person because he criticizes iran but tomorrow the same society should not say salman rushdie wrote a book about ramayana you should be able to take it are you criticize salman rushdie in the right place sir don't write about religion but the beauty is when you criticize something if it is truly great it it will shine more if ramayana can stand the time stand of time for 5000 years and still stands very strong that means it must be a very good authority right okay all the criticism in the world cannot take away the shine of ramayana so then criticize it more i am not afraid because i know it is a wonderful book it cannot be touched by anyone so that is my confidence my religion gives me that kind of confidence but if you are offended by the very first criticism yes there is something wrong okay so that is the overall understanding okay as a liberal society as a democratic society we can allow anyone to criticize anything in the reasonable pace if you don't like something you can counter argue counter criticize i can write a book telling why satanic verses is wrong or why salman rushdie is wrong that is again my opinion write books argue counter argue invite him to debates convince him if you genuinely feel you know i have committed a mistake i, I didn't understand the book so then he will probably apologize or he will or his stand will get strengthened the world needs to know more truth that kind of debate is not happening when it's about you i am happy to support you when it's about me please don't even write an article okay yeah and the problem uh, of one more problem of this is radicalization is i don't know about my own religion most hindus don't know hinduism and our uh, sanatan dharma there is no such thing as hinduism we are not a ism right we are a dharma we are land of dharma uh, dharma is sanatan that means it's never ending or it does not have a point okay it is there always okay the problem is when people say you know you have three crore gods most hindus don't know how to counter that See that is the thing, right? Okay, there is only uh, ultimately one Parabrahma in Hinduism. Whether you read uh, Shiva Purana or uh, Krishna or Devi or whatever it is, the ultimate summary is God is one. Okay, so but 
we don't know how to convey that because i haven't ever read my own books right everybody says bhagavad gita bhagavad gita bhagavad gita has wonderful book but nobody reads the explanation to bhagavad gita first of all we forgot how to read sanskrit even i don't know that okay so that, that's not a problem at least the translations we don't have the time hmm? then the same with all other religions right then at the age of 18 19 i go to youtube to search what is my religion okay the first person i find is someone like night okay so let's say if i am i am from uh, islam then i don't know properly i i can i can read quran or i will do namaz and all those but actually don't understand what is islam then i will you go to youtube and search what is hinduism what is uh, islam or something then if the first person i find is someone radicalized okay then i will start believing that this is my version of the india okay or this is my version of hinduism oh i should also be like this hinduism is weak right now hindus should unite hindus should stand tall something 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 then what happens i become radical i will become communalized or radicalized or something but if there is a right teacher from day one from the childhood itself you will understand how how great my religion is or how great other religions is because my religion has a courage to say that you know sarva dharma samabhava all religions are equal okay then i will understand i need not worry about my religion because my religion's philosophy is much much more matured than anything i know okay indian philosophy stands very very tall it is our inability to understand its depth okay then i will not be worried by small small offenses but the moment you are getting offended by small you know criticism then means you are not sure you are insecure that insecurity has to go away that that can only go away through education right so again uh, so i hope the debate made some sense to you like what is allegory of cave that is the depth that you are supposed to know and this will help you in ethics paper essay paper and your overall understanding of india the freedom of religion the debates and communalism that is happening in the society yes wrong is wrong nobody should be killed in the name of religion and many radicalized youth from uh, this particular community or other in other places of the world see there are also white people uh, who are getting radicalized and kill each other in the schools gun culture in usa right so uh, rise of right wing all over the world not only in usa india is happening because youth are not aware of their own religions they don't have the understanding okay and this fake news is a huge problem it creates more hate than love and as nelson mandela says if hate can be learned so can be love if you know how to if you if you can learn how to hate someone you can also learn how to love someone and there is one more veil uh, not no but for social justice veil of ignorance by john rawls veil of ignorance by john rawls that is one more that you can learn <coughs> everyone is born equal yes see again uh, all these things are very uh, i mean they need in depth discussion right you need you need to spend good amount of time these things won't get into your brain immediately you need to read this analyze this for months six seven months down the line these things will become part of who you are that is when you will start appreciating the articles in newspaper so keep reading that is my suggestion if you have read this and okay okay this article is veil of maya veil of cave okay salman does this something something i didn't understand and you moved on you lost a huge opportunity to reshape your thought process <coughs> yes it gives you a wonderful opportunity to understand hmm? so again as gandhi says hit the sin not the sinner it takes huge amount of mental maturity any confusions need any explanation and one general suggestion i give to all my students is read letters to the editor write letters to the editor 
if you read newspaper every day you will have a opinion you will have say you will have a say on something you feel like expressing something then write the same thing to the hindu if you get published you can cite that as a example in your main staff detailed application form you can say that is my hobby writing letters to the editor okay and at the same time the advantage of writing letters to the editor is you have this much amount of data to say like huge data to say but you have to write only this much so concise of data will improve your articulation abilities okay say for example see this bal subramanian pavan is a regular writer she wrote uh, while refugees do need compassion there are limits india can take right it is a very very generic statement uh, i personally don't appreciate such generic statement why uh, do, doesn't india need doesn't india know that it needs to discuss with myanmar if you know as a reader as probably a upsc aspirant don't you think indian government or jay shankar knows that yes you if you are if you have to contribute something contribute by saying how bring a out of box solution right by 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 helping myanmar construct the something or by contributing something see if you don't want a headache in country you have to spend something right there is a mutual compromise between india and myanmar just like in sri lanka in sri lanka uh, we are helping the refugees the tamil refugees uh, recover by having houses so my government sri lanka do not have money for the refugees then indian government gave money for sri lankan refugees in sri lanka they have constructed camps and all those things so the migrants are happy there in the same way you can discuss with myanmar by constructing some you know camps or something and getting promises that people in this particular colony will not be affected that is a solution that is contribution saying myanmar and india should talk is as jay shankar says lazy analogy right okay again not my words jay shankar okay but again that is not the purpose of letters to the editor letters to the editor is expressing your own frustration like i didn't like something i like it something or if we can discuss about this this article was good this article was not good okay. so see here sheshadri santanam is very angry why he says allowing remission is a barbaric crime is worse than the crime itself so that is a contribution that is his version of the story right what happened to her is crime okay by releasing them you have committed even heinous crime again everybody can have opinions we don't have to agree with her or disagree with her but looking at different different perspectives will develop your own thinking process and the most difficult part is to put something on pen and paper when you sit tomorrow to type a letter to the editor for example you will understand how difficult it is to articulate something in such a small space right so try try that try writing this and here is the email id okay we can even write to indian express they also publish editor letters to the editor so the more you write the better your uh, articulation and better your hobby will be whether they are published or not it is irrelevant but you doing that daily will develop your writing skill yes <laughs> this we have discussed right yesterday this article is about internal security so so re- soon we are going to use technology to strengthen our security system so there will be questions like how indian government is using technology so 5g technology will strengthen internal security or in gs paper 3 science and tech you will find a question saying how is indian government uh, sorry how will 5g help india right there will also will be helpful so now you have understood at least in the last 3 days like what is the depth of newspaper and how newspaper can help you each and every day okay and i have not even entered into economy because if i enter into economy you need to have some basics okay without basics business section paper will be like a huge headache hmm? uh, say for example unless you know the meaning of inflation 
and different types of inflation and what is inflation targeting for example here he like he writes uh, level below 6% 2 or 2 to 6 okay none of these things will make sense unless you have some basics so don't think that i'm skipping newspaper articles I, I am i have a very clear idea when to discuss what and as i say current affairs is always circular the same topics are coming from my preparation it's 2010 okay nothing new will come hmm? so don't worry about leaving anything but just keep reading so that at least they are in your brain 5g inflation uh, gst these terms you should get familiarized with okay and if you can frame questions like this one liners it will also give you some clarity or else i will give you the questions so you can think about the same in the newspaper articles so now i want you to also understand what is expected of you in the upsc okay so <clears throat> most people are lazy uh, all humans are lazy by default except when your life is under threat okay we tend not to do things as abraham lincoln says if i have 4 hours to chop a tree Okay, I will sharpen the axe for three hours. Right? You need to have a good tool to cut the tree, right? What is the point of cutting the tree with a blunt axe? Sharp axe means more efficiency. In the same way, more questions and more understanding of the pattern means more efficient reading of newspaper and then UPSC preparation. So this is 2021 UPSC essay paper. If you see this, you will understand why sir spent 20 minutes discussing the allegory of cave okay all the eight topics are philosophical topics there is no breathing space you can read the topics right the process of self discovery has become technologically outsourced second statement your perception of me is reflection of you my reflection to you is awareness uh, my reaction to you is awareness of you you have to write 1200 words for normal person who do not understand, you know, A4 sheet, right? Front and back. Like this, you have to fill five pages. And the same topic, not what you know. Okay. You have to expand this into 1200 words. Philosophy, for example. How? Okay. Yes, first of all, you need to understand the question, right? If you don't understand the question, how will you expand? Uh, the real is rational. Rational is real. You understand Maya, no? Yeah. Okay. Maya is real. Real is Maya. Maya is real, right? Yeah. No? <laughs> Paradox. Paradox. Exactly. And you are supposed to write a 1200 word essay on this. With intro body conclusion. So every dot connects with the other dot. So don't underestimate newspapers or UPC preparation. It's not a halwa, it's not a joke. If so many people are struggling, then you need to get even more stronger, better. Yes. <clears throat> Just for understanding sake, can you even give me one example for the fourth topic? The real is rational, rational is real. Example, communal rights. Mm -hmm. People are fighting. Hmm. For something which Where does it fit? Real is rational in the sense of uh, what actual, actual I mean, uh, mythology say, says is far away from what people think. See, it has to be the same person, right? It, is, it should be like uh, two sides of the same coin. Uh, uh, let's say the real is rational. I hate X. Okay, that is rational for me. I hate X. Okay, that is that is that is my reality. That is my rationality. So, see, rationality cannot be same for no two people, right? Your rationality is different from my rationality. My reality is different from your reality. For you, real is different. For me, real is different. Then I started believing that rationality is real. It has to be the same head and same tail. Two sides of the same coin. Okay. So these are philosophical topics. It, it, it is getting difficult every year. Hmm? So your perception of me is a reflection of you. My reaction to you is awareness of me. I did give an example for this today itself. In today's class, I gave you an example which you can use in essay number two. Salman 
I don't know. Remember the first class diagram? Dots, information, wisdom. Try to reconnect all the examples I have given and try to apply it to second essay. Reacting to Kamil Rajesh Bhai's video, I am open to the debate if I am sure enough. That's my awareness. Mm -hmm. The Kerala laptop example. Yeah. So, my perception is that men and women should not be sitting together. Okay, but by the action shows, I'm more mature than you. So, I'm not bothered about your lived statements. The Kerala judge case also can be an example. See, it, it is very difficult. It comes only through practice, right? So, you have to apply it. Again, you, have, you don't know ABCD of UPSC. Say, I don't expect you to know, but I'm trying to warn you that you are entering into a cave. You should not enter with darkness in your mind, right? <coughs> yes. There are better practices too. Best practices. History repeats itself first as a tragedy, second as a farce. What is research but a blind date with knowledge? Hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Which topic is sounding very familiar? Hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> no? What did you write for 1200 words in one essay? Right? That is a challenge. So that is where you should be aiming for. Okay. Now, having said that, I will just look briefly at the, uh, let's say, some questions. The, the question number uh, six and question number eight. Sounds very simple, right? Why is Indian considered considered as a subcontinent? Okay, you read that as one line in uh, in CRT, right? India is, India is a subcontinent. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Why? Question number nine, question number ten. Coal related. Not only coal, it is all about overall, right? India has India has rivers, India has mountains, India has plateaus from starting to ending. India is a as big as a continent, either in population size also, in so many ways you can justify that answer. But again, question number 10, have you ever heard about the term gig economy? No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is something you see every day. Swiggy, Zomato, Delivery Boys, all these people are called as gig economy. Gig means a small act. Gig is an act in a drama, right? One hour you are a driver, one hour you are a delivery boy, one hour you are something else. So that small gigs you play in the economy is gig economy. Part-time workers, contractual labors. So all this is a gig economy. Hmm? So that is you know, how UPSC asks you direct question, right? Hmm. Again, I'm, so, I'm not entering into geography because you won't appreciate it. But for society point of view, uh, as I said, if you remember, cryptocurrency questions. What is cryptocurrency? How does it affect global society? How has it affected Indian society? Okay. Hmm. The 20th question is a bouncer, right? See, no institute in the entire country will prepare you for such questions. Okay, UPSC asks such questions deliberately so that student will think on his or her feet. There is no such thing as ready-made answer. <laughs> How does Indian society maintain continuity in traditional social values? Not only social values, traditional social values. You have to be traditionally social value that has to be continued. And how are you making sure that it is getting to next? If you misinterpret anywhere, either in social values or in traditional or anything, gone. The, you, you, you'll write something else. Okay. Hmm? That is why exactly it is called as a bow. Yeah. Again, the question paper is GS paper one society. Promoting festival, festival celebration. Hmm. 
creating awareness about mm. about festivals and why why we celebrate that mm-hmm. giving importance to all religions and all all celebrations and how are you carrying that enumerate the changes taking place and are the changes taking place in the right way or the wrong way partial in this answer right? mm-hmm. so i can't give away my answer right oh mm. like changes changes mm. mm. so another question please yes please yeah it's about how we are maintaining social value so <laughs> can we mention that they are getting diluted and why not are they st- are they strong they are getting diluted right then write that only see there are ways how whatsapp is promoting social values at the same time how whatsapp is eroding social values both are true you can write both you just have to put promote <coughs> you have to expand right hmm? if you remember the first question what is the first question i mean if you see the first question what is the first question constitutional morality is rooted in the constitution itself and is founded on essential facets explain the doctrine of constitutional morality with the help of relevant judicial decisions at least you know what is constitutional morality right what is constitutional morality judgment of the judge according to the constitution anything good according to the constitution is constitutional morality something has to be upheld as constitution then you can give certain examples okay so every day you get an opportunity to collect case studies okay if you read newspapers your examples will be very dynamic i mean at least in your mind you will be able to recollect right one day all these examples will show up in some material but when you read the material it will be like a second revision but if you only depend on magazines it will backfire okay your effort combined with smart work will take you to places okay so think about um, uh fifth question have you ever heard the term is it in your syllabus topics yes the explicit the present tense what about the rest of you syllabus copy on the prayer groups which paper two or one <laughs> <laughs> hmm gs paper to prayer groups there is there is an explicit line hmm? that is why i told you and why am i showing you the question papers i am showing you the question papers to show that upsc exactly follows the syllabus copy but it will be dynamic they will not ask you from that point of view what is pressure group what they are asking you pressure groups in context of business communities pressure group in context of someone else <coughs> okay in the same way uh, you will find the term called as self help groups ngos so there is a question on self help groups but in the newspaper if you see self help group asha workers anganwadi if you don't read that article you lost something so knowing syllabus copy knowing previous year questions will keep your mind even more open you will you will read and appreciate the articles in a better way hmm. if you see the 10th question uh it's visible right yeah the usa is facing an existential threat from china that is more challenging than s12 soviet union so the first class i think i have discussed briefly very briefly about taiwan right. and why taiwan is a tool between china and usa the real issue is not taiwan the real issue is war between china and usa so you revised a question without even knowing that you are revising it so that is the beauty of newspaper okay so at least you have some idea right china and us are fighting taiwan is a tool china does not want usa to rise or usa does not want china to rise why Unipolar. they want a unipolar world not a bipolar world what does india need india need a multipolar world okay so like this you write at least the answer hmm?
सेवेंटीन तो क्वेश्चन इस आगे ने कॉमन सेंसिकल क्वेश्चन राइट So he has already removed two things. Normally, how do you empower women? Education. How do you empower women by giving schemes? He already said we are doing all these things. Tell me something new. Men education and men empower. Feminist. What interventions can help change the milieu? Like how will we change the life of women in post-independence? Hmm. Mm-hmm. One two fifty words. You have to write. You have said one line. What about the rest? I've written the same words. Parliament. Parliament. More women. Will mm -hmm. it fall under empowerment scheme? No, it's not a scheme, right? Scheme. The schemes is like giving you some dole. Again, don't worry. See, again, please remember, my my intention is not to make you answer these questions. My intention is just to make you think that questions will come in these lines. You need to be alert. Next time when you see something about, let's say, uh, women empowerment, your brain will automatically think, "Can I use this in that particular question?" Yes, sir. No, that is the purpose. That is how you grow. <coughs> Reservation in jobs. Again, it is more about holistic things like like you know pushing more women into or creating infrastructure. There, there are a lot of things that you can do. Uh, see, you have to build the capabilities, right? Yesterday, that is my summary. You create the roads automatically. People will walk. Without creating roads, you cannot say people are not walking. <clears throat> there is nothing i mean this paper is a technical paper paper 3 at least 10th question makes some sense to you Hmm. Hmm. You can write. Uh, in Indian internal security should be updated. Uh, I mean the servers up. But again, you haven't come across a single article which you can directly use. So as I said, this is a technical paper, right? <coughs> In the last four days, we haven't discussed any uh, this this one. Seventeenth question. Okay, so we have we have seen the uh, we have seen the article Arctic amplification article, right? So we know how bad. Glasgow Agreement has done, or what are Panchamrit principles of India? We haven't discussed, but. at least you can connect right okay there is a problem then there is a solution hmm. 20th question also we can use from today's discussion right analyze the complexity and intensity of terrorism <coughs> linkages and obnoxious nexus see terrorism is an ideology right terrorism is a thought process so why is it so why is it complex why is it intense there are lot of reasons why terrorism exists there are lot of reasons why that is, that is in, intense and there is a reason why it is ob obnoxious nexus nexus means nexus 
means an unholy connection right like in, in the sense it's, it's it's more about things that should not exist the connections that should not exist like uh, uh, politicians and terrorists working together okay or uh, villagers and terrorists working together that connection should not be there terrorists should be shunned by everyone but if some locals are supporting the terrorists then there means the locals are not happy with the government yes that is when terrorism survives so i have to discuss this from that particular point of view at least keep in mind that whatever we have discussed will make sense in in the long run hmm. <clears throat> so again uh, 6b uh, this question dalai lama question so upsc expects you to write it 10 marker or a quote you can never obtain peace in outer world until we obtain peace with ourselves what should we do Mm -hmm. Our people is our religious tolerance. Why, why, why there? Why go? Okay. Why, why go to communalism? Then nobody can teach you, right? Like this is not something that anybody can teach you. You have to think what is your inner peace or what is uh, your understanding of development comes only through your understanding of ethics. But that happens only through daily churning. <coughs> hmm. uh, for example, life does not make, doesn't make any sense without uh, interdependence. Okay. We need each other and sooner we learn it is better for all of us. Can you use anything? No need of going for war. Interdependence. Mm -hmm. Suppose if there are hatred, if there is hatred between two nations, we don't cut off all the time because we may need some oil, we may need some imports from them. Going for war. Can we say this is an English translation of what's there, Yeah, maybe. Right? Can can we can we also think of this in the lines of Vasudeva Kutumbakam? Yes, right. Vasudeva Kutumbakam is interdependence and appreciation for the whole world as a family, and the world will depend on each yes, other. Sir. We have discussed Vasudeva Kutumbakam, right? So that what we are saying, we need each other. The more we have, the more we shine. See, you are good at something. I am good at something. Someone else is good at something. Everybody will contribute to the overall greatness of the society, right? The world will be less vibrant with less diversity. More diversity means more vibrancy, more creativity, more talent, more lot of more things. Music, food, support systems, talent, skills, contributions, huge diversity. Yes, then. <clears throat> so that is why current affairs are everyday appreciation of newspaper plus your static knowledge will give you that clarity. So, refugee is everybody prepared for GS paper 3, internal security. But it came in GS paper 4. Now, we have to write the ethical issues of sending back the Rohingyas. But you cannot say, no, 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 I prepared only for 3, you cannot write in 4, right? You have to write or else your competition will write and get good scores. So, you will be forced to write in ethics paper. How will you write Rohingyas, about Rohingyas in paper number 4? That is clear. Again, hmm, you can write that. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Got the idea? Yes. Now, having discussed the papers, <clears throat> I'm not going to discuss case studies and all those things. Hmm. Okay. So, please remember, this is how UPSC real paper will be. Uh, this is essay copy, but this is GS copy. In GS paper, they will have a question and a limited space. So for a 10 marker, <coughs> you have two, two pages. So on any given topic, 
if you have content to fill two pages or 150 words your preparation is done yesterday you were asking a question right like when will we know that we have to stop okay if i ask you a question to write about refugees or rohingya issue sir i can fill two papers easily like who are rohingyas what are the problems what is indian government stand what should we do your job is done <clears throat> because even if you have 10 pages of data you only have two pages to write so why do you need more content right that is that is a standard templatization of your preparation that means <clears throat> whatever topic you prepare for example you must have seen a topic called as 1857 Modern Indian history, first chapter, eighteen fifty-seven revolt. Okay, ah, uh, the first mutiny or the Sepoy mutiny. So, what are the three questions that can come from Sepoy mutiny? Why did Sepoy mutiny happen? Okay, ah, uh, what are the reasons for failure or success of Sepoy mutiny? Okay, what are the lessons that we can from Sepoy mutiny? Right. So, if you can write a two-page answer on all these three topics, that chapter is done for you. Is that no? If if a different question comes, but it should come only from these three areas. Right? Who participated? Why it started? Is it a success or a failure? What happened? What happened after eighteen fifty seven? Events. British became more aware. British has changed the laws. It has started mixing the uh, you know army regiments. More more British officers. Railways has been laid so that movement can happen. So done. What else will you write? okay so that means everything you prepare from today should go in the lines of question and answer format you read a newspaper think of okay what is anthropocene what is climate change uh, i have some idea okay if you are reading a chapter read it in the format of questions if you are reading for films read the pyqs and then read the chapter all right so <clears throat> 1857 revolt chapter can be sub, uh, divided into six questions maximum if you can answer all the six questions that chapter is done for you Okay, you don't even have to make notes in your mind. You can make the notes. That structure will automatically come, right? What are the reasons for eighteen fifty seven revolt? Religious reasons, agricultural reasons, taxation. Like this, you can even sub categorize, and automatically you will remember in a more structured way. Is that no? What are the religious reasons that Muslims did not like? You know, pork or the the rumors that you know the cartridge was filled with. Beef and pork fat. So one is of against Indians, one is against the Muslims. So both of us did not like that. Then other reasons like <coughs> that is one more reason. We can write like this: pent up frustration, agriculture. Agriculture was failing. British was exposing more taxes, and many farmers' sons are working in army. Yeah, they were able to connect, so on and so forth. The structuring will be there. Hmm? So that is one thing. For a fifteen marker, uh, it will be like two and a half pages. This, let's say this is a fifteen marker question: one page, two page, and three page. The extra one. Okay, more or less it's the same, right? But just extra one sheet. This half sheet you have to fill. Okay, so for two fifty words, you have three sheets. For one fifty words, you have. Two sheets. You, it's not a school exam, right? You have to fill the entire paper. No. If you have content, you fill it, or else happily fill the whatever you want. Don't bluff. So ultimately, your entire preparation of UPSC boils down to two and a half pages, or one and a half sheet, right? Front, back, and one side. Like three white papers, if you can fill on any given topic, <clears throat> either in optional or in GS, your preparation is done. You don't need to prepare more. You don't need to prepare less. If you can prepare in an optimal fashion, done. <coughs> okay, that is the objectivity. Now, for you to go back and understand how to fill this paper, you need to make notes in one page. What do I mean by making notes in one page? Say, yeah, uh, let's say, what are the problems of women in India? Okay, if there are problems, there are solutions. Where does the solution come from? The solutions will come from constitution, government steps, then civil society steps. Okay, like this you can create a template. Almost all things in UPSC are linked directly or indirectly to the constitution. 
so if it is about women security uh, economy or anything is there a constitutional linkage then is there an act is there a scheme are there any steps taken by government okay yes. then what else is happening like this if i can have a one page notes okay and that to in keywords <clears throat> keywords means what for example under 1857 if i say if we assuming you have read that chapter if i say religious reasons didn't you recollect what are the religious reasons but the what triggered you to recollect those points the keyword that religious reasons agricultural reasons so in your notes what should be the keywords religion agriculture taxation uh, you know subordination mistreatment hmm. kind of mind map but summarize summarize notes okay same hmm? but it can be created very easily and you can fold the a4 sheet also right it, all you have to write is in keywords keywords facts and data that's it revision will be very very easy but people make very very lengthy notes bulky notes and all those things that is why i said don't make until your second revision irrespective of whatever the topic it is optional gs sa ethics whatever you have to read it twice only then you can make notes in a keyword fashion okay <coughs> so ultimately where do you stop preparing preparing for one any one particular topic for example freebies how much data do you need for freebies first of all what is freebies what is the definition of freebies freebies are good freebies are bad is there a better way then if you can make this much amount of notes then you can fill to 50 words easily preparation is done you move on to next topic but the problem is people do phd on freebies i need a 10 page notes i need to be as good as amartya sen that is not your purpose your purpose is to be a generalist a generalist will know something about everything a specialist will know everything about something so your job is to know something about everything you, you should be able to talk about kathakali you should be able to talk about freebies you should be able to talk about internal security ethics everything into 50 words a jack of all trades exactly right you should be talking everything at the same time nobody expects depth from you but minimum depth you can always have hmm? so 250 words on any one topic preparation is done but for that to do you need to understand syllabus copy and previous questions <coughs> the more you revise uh, the better it is for you to understand okay so that is why again i am repeating myself A reverse engineer UPSC preparation by first understanding what is expected of you. You need to know whom or what you are going to war with. Okay, then you need to understand what kind of defense tools I need. Then what are the how are the questions framed? Prelims and mains. Then what is my syllabus copy? Then your boundaries are set. Then all you have to do is like hours. Close your eyes. Sit in a room. Lock yourself in a chair for eight hours every day, and read. If you read, even mountains will perish. If Lakshmi Kant is a mountain, it will go away one day. Economy one day. Everything will go away one day. But whatever looks like Himalayas now can be easily conquered if you sit and read. The biggest problem is sitting in a chair for eight hours and reading. Not continuously, but throughout the day, you need to take eight hours and read every day consistently. Yes. reading with intent is more important we are in front of the book for 10 hours our mind is yes roaming here and there then your output is 2 hours your output should be 8 then that is the day you will crack it okay unfortunately our education system do not train you for all these things right our colleges graduation we are not used to sitting in words and reading focus only we don't know what is the meaning of focus everybody will say focus 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 but we don't know how to focus yes so first thing you need to do is start getting used to sitting in a chair that is first thing i have done so one of my doctor friend he used to sit 10 12 hours easily he he got used from his graduation days maybe a doctor right so but for me it was a very new thing so the first thing i adapted is i will sit in a chair whether i will sleep or read a book novel or movie or watch whatever but i first need to train my body to sit in a chair so if you can train your body to sit in a chair for consistent amount of time then slowly your patience levels will increase 
then your comfort will increase then you will start reading it will improve into focus momentum can do magic yes or no just like the snowball effect momentum can do magic but for the momentum to happen it will take time so day one i am not expecting you to do miracles but slowly move in that direction step by step first read start re sitting in a chair then start reading focus then question yourself that concept is called as active recall you have read the arctic uh, amplification article then close your eyes and try to recollect everything you have read or else before sleep or some people will do this like you have read all the day 9 to 10 11 o'clock you will sleep 9 to 10 you will try to recollect whatever you have read in that particular day or else the very next thing you do in the morning is recollect what you have read yesterday so whatever works for you that also helps a lot right and maintaining a journal also helps so normally i suggest excel sheets because it's easy, easy to fill online right so if you can create an excel sheet with the date how many hours i have read i i can i can share a link with you if you need so it will it will give you a uh, history of your preparation so one year down the line if you go back and look why i failed or why i passed it it, it will give your uh, life history right on day 14 uh, slept for 8 hours watched movie why i read only for 2 hours i watched more movies so next day it will act as an introspection so you'll have an entire history of your preparation okay that will act as a self introspection right it's like you know it it not be public it can be for your own eyes but still it will help you so this week do you know how many hours you have read in theory right like uh, you will have a rough guess but i have some students who are doing this i can exactly open his excel sheet and i can show you he read for 59 hours last week he exactly read for 59 hours and within that i can tell how many hours he has spent on optional how many hours he has spent on gs how many hours he has spent on newspaper so not only knowing that i have read 60 hours last week i also know where i have spent there is also a column which says you know uh, Many hours you have wasted on non-UPSC stuff, like you know, talking to friends. Not a crime. One hour is fine. Eight hours is too much, right? Eight hours of non-UPSC per day, right? So then he knows. Sara also knows that he knows. I can see that video, right? Uh, so he knows that he has wasted forty hours on non-UPSC stuff, like watching YouTube, movies, parties, and all those things. then that will put some shame in him okay i need to work more hard so ideally 8 hours means even for 6 days monday to saturday also you have to do 50 48 to 54 hours something like that right so if you cross the 50 hour limit per week then you are doing fantastically well but the averages will come down to what 4 5 means 30 30 35 is average so every 20 hours you lose per week now will accumulate in the long run and your is decided in how many hours in upsc 2 hours in prelims 3 hours for essay 2 plus 3 5 hours right then 12 hours of gs papers 3 3 3 okay 17 hours okay and then 3 uh, 6 more hours of optional okay so in less than 24 hours your entire life is decided by upsc and you are wasting 20 hours per week okay so you can understand the importance of every hour right in the preparation in the long run so empirical data have its own beauty it will give you that introspection it will give you that thought process it's rational and it keeps you on check so like this there are lot of tricks tips and suggestions to help you go in the right path but again who will walk that path it's you right you have to walk you have to sit and read the paper you have to sit and read the syllabus copy so this is a third day i don't know how many of you are sitting online or offline carrying the syllabus copy right how many of you are reading syllabus copy you don't understand the seriousness of that suggestion right Uh, syllabus copy where will it go it is there from 2013 it will be there till 2024 it won't go anywhere but it should be in your brain it helps you filter the topics it helps you propel like anything 
So this is what we call as a smart preparation. I hope you understood. Yes. So start doing all these things immediately. Start writing NCRTs. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can always talk to me. there is a concept called as FOMO. Fear of missing out, right? FOMO. If I don't read this article, if I don't read this book, okay, what will happen? Uh, what if the question comes from this? Okay, so that is the most uh, common understanding. As I said, UPSC can be prepared in layers. Uh, my, my, my simple explanation to that is Pareto optimality. <laughs> Okay, if these things will become very familiar one day. So there is a Pareto optimality. You must have heard about it. Like eighty twenty principle. Twenty percent of your efforts will get you eighty percent of the scores. In life, in reality, in anywhere also, only twenty percent of your efforts will get you eighty percent of the scores. Let's imagine Amazon have hundred companies, hundred subdivisions. Only twenty. Subdivisions are making 80% of the revenue. The rest are all being maintained. Okay. The same way in UPSC, if you read 20 right chapters in that particular subject, 80% of the questions will come from that area. The rest are, the rest 80% chapters are useless, are not so important. For example, fundamental rights, DPSP, uh, constitutional bodies, okay, parliament chapter, etc. Like this, seven or eight chapters will be there. If you master these subjects, 80% of the questions will come only from these areas. But student will start treating all the 77 chapters in Lakshmi Kant as equal. So that will never go away, right? So you'll always think, sir, the 77 questions, 77 chapters are there, but you're talking only about four or five important chapters. But what if the question comes from? This. No. Hmm. How would I know? Like, how can I differentiate? Like, which is different? That is exactly what I told you, right? That is, I have already given you the answer. If you implement it, you will know it, right? At the moment you start opening quality previous year questions, both in prelims and mains, you will see the repeated questions: fundamental rights, fundamental rights, fundamental rights, fundamental rights. Like literally, you will be burned, you know, uh, you know, irritated. Like how many fundamental rights questions can be there? Okay. But in spite of no matter how many times you read, still you will get them wrong. So UPSC need not even ask questions from the rest 70 chapters. All it has to do is keep repeating the same themes also. Still people are not getting score, uh, good scores. And, uh, and the irony is cutoffs are getting lower. There was a time where cutoff was 109. There, was, there is a time now where cutoff is 18. It's, with increased wisdom, scores are coming down. Okay, why? Too much information. You have too much information, right? Instead of reading Lakshmi Kant and these eight chapters perfectly, students have time to read Telegram channels, WhatsApp messages, lot of things. So I am happy that people are distracted. Why? The genuine ones will always clear. The genuine ones are the ones who will follow this simple schedule, simple strategy. They will clear. Then when you are happily distracted, how? who am I to stop you? Right? So as I, say, as I keep saying, failure is a default setting in UPSC. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is sit there and failure will come and meet you. Okay. Yes. 20% effort will get you 80% of the marks. Trust me. It works in every uh, stage. Either prelims, mains or interview. So sir, if everybody knows this, at least most mentors will know this, right? Then why are students still not clearing? The problem is, as I said, lack of trust is first thing. Second thing is lack of patience. This is what I call as core of the core. Okay. The 20 most important chapters or 20% syllabus, whatever it is, are the core. Okay. The rest is 80%. First, you cover co core of the core. 
your confidence will boost like anything you solve the questions from those areas then you go to the rest of the 80% syllabus okay but three questions will come from this area uh, let's say 15 questions will come from this area student will think that you know because of these three things i have failed and he will start spending too much time on the rest of the things but actually he failed because out of the 15 most expected obvious questions he supposed to get all the 15 correct but here he got only 12 correct he actually failed because of these three questions not these three because this is a bouncer this is a notion out of 70 chapters i can ask from any corner you you don't know it's not your fault okay but if you got something wrong from fundamental rights or constitutional bodies or parliament chapter 100% your fault why a senior will never get these questions wrong he will always get these questions correct well as a fresher he will focus on these three questions the extra the masala he is more bothered about the chutney rather than the dosa okay so that is why people fail hmm? <clears throat> so if you take the mains or prelims previous year questions and understand the topics then you will know what to read exactly okay and i can bet in india there are less than 2500 students who will actually read all the previous year questions who are writing prelims or mains very few people will do this actually they don't have time why sir new material everybody is reading that new shiny material i i, I don't have time to lakshmi kant hmm? so this actually works again one year down the line when you write prelims meet me uh, i i can prove you with empirical data yes i was right okay but you need to have that patience confidence and trust that i need to focus on the 20% syllabus not chapters 20% of the syllabus this will vary from subject to subject for art and culture it is different for lakshmi kant it is different but this 20% will not change for mains also gs paper 2 gs paper 3 gs paper 1 gs paper 4 there is a 20% strategy right people don't do people don't write if i know 10 students who are writing mains nine out of them don't even complete the entire test series they pay 25000 rupees 30000 rupees to write the join the test series but not all the 10 tests or 12 tests are written by students they will write 6 to 8 max very few people will actually complete the entire test series that is how difficult it is 12 threes are 36 right okay so they have to spend 30, 36 hours in their entire 100 days period but still they find it very difficult to, to manage okay so hours are very very important in upsc if you understand their importance okay core focus on core of the core core of the core can easily be identified through previous questions master pyqs master both prelims and mains questions you will not have any doubts should we directly jump into pyqs before ncrt ncrt keep looking at them that is what i told you right you don't need to know the answers of the previous year questions you need to know them that this is a question next time if you see great indian bastard you should tell me sir it was a pyq what will your brain do it will prioritize indian great indian bastard right Next time, if you see localization, don't you think you'll remember? The same with category or uh, cave of allegory. You will remember, okay, this can be used in essay. How do you know that? Because at least you know that there is a question. I haven't asked the answer for your essay topics, right? I showed you eight essays. Did I ask you answers? No. I wanted you to remember those essays. Why? Next time when you see perception, reality, at least your brain will say this, is, this kind of stupidity can come in essay. Your brain will remind you, prioritize. So it is... Yeah, it is filtering out the 80. It is asking you to focus on the 20. So that is indirectly what we are doing. We did discuss every article line by line in the newspaper. But don't you feel you have learned a lot? Yes. So where did that knowledge come from? In the entire article of Salman Rasdi, I focused on one word and I discussed for 20 minutes. So if you know where to focus, automatically your growth will be there. If you read the entire article but miss that one word, It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Yes. Okay. Syllabus copy PYQ. Read them like Bhagavad Gita or Hanuman Chalisa. I don't know how many of you read Hanuman Chalisa, but if you read Hanuman Chalisa, you may not know the meaning, right? 100%. I don't know. At least <laughs> okay. you may know. You might be enlightened. Okay. So if I don't know, I'm still reading it for the sake of reading it, right? Just like the same thing, read. 
uh, syllabus copy previous year questions you don't need to know the answers don't look at the answers also the moment you see albedo albedo is a previous year question constitutional bench previous year question constitutional morality next time when i use that word your brain will say 2021 gs paper 2 first question what is constitutional morality give some examples oh i need to be more alert that is the purpose okay so again saying is easy yes. hmm maya <laughs> everything is maya okay so any questions Along with see like this, what parallel can we start in in CRTs? Hmm. We can start reading the NCRTs. See again, it depends on your aptitude. Like for example, if you are very comfortable in reading uh, NCRTs, you can start them parallelly every two hours or three hours a day, something like. Good questions. Exercise to me, advancements. to understand the question in the first place means not even to understand the philosophical any books to refer or uh, you need to complete the syllabus right as i said ethics syllabus first of all you need to complete the ethics syllabus in totality only then you'll understand we didn't really understand what in what perception he asked that question and in what perception he And that comes with practice right that is why i told you when did i say answer writing should be started if you remember my earlier class there was a huge way right yes, you don't go to tirupati balaji directly right you go to bus stand then walk then uh, the toothpaste first fill the toothpaste automatically you'll understand it so again these things did not come to us easily right even we have to go through a, a lot of stuff it took ages for us to understand the demand we can shorten that time you don't need have to invest 6 years i am asking you to invest 6 months again understand really really smart people will also prepare for this exam we are competing with the smartest of the cream hmm? smartest of the smart so we have to upgrade our games thought process we cannot solve upsc as a problem with the same mindset that we entered with you came from different different backgrounds different different education maybe your family have someone from bureaucratic bureaucratic lines uh, they guided you they haven't guided you we haven't never read hindu newspaper till now now suddenly you came to upsc so we cannot compete with someone some like irs son a irs must have groomed his son or daughter from day one on how to become an ias officer you cannot compete with her overnight but you can definitely compete with her beat her if possible but that path has to be understood right yes <coughs> so don't don't compare yourself with seniors or anyone else or even with me or anything in that case not even upsc but slowly we will reach there basics basics are everything trust me Uh, one day when you are so good in your basics like in prelims static wise that is the day where upsc will be like cake walk for you but if your basics are weak if your static have holes then there is nothing even god can do static is everything static is yeah, like uh, like the ultimate goal master static through previous year questions at base level basic level then automatically everything else will make sense and unlike school exam or college exam nothing no single subject will be understood by you in the very first go you have to go through it multiple times teacher will teach you you will understand you will forget again you will read something will come back second revision something more will come back third revision you will actually start making sense so this is a process not a school right don't and don't think that you know upsc coaching is like spoon feeding even the best of the best teachers in india cannot also spoon feed you why the exams nature is to make you think so when the nature is made to make you think you what should be developed how to think got it <coughs> anything else amarun 
Karunya, right? Yes. Any questions? Like, uh, it's totally taken right? mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Honesty. <laughs> I have completed my degree last month. Last month. Hmm. So I have written yesterday the entrance. Okay. So I'm planning to learn parallel along with me. Mm -hmm. Even uh, last uh, admissions team sir invited for interview. Mm -hmm. And we have discussed the uh, like uh, financial problems with us, sir. Mm -hmm. So we have decided to stay calm this year and come next year. Mm -hmm. To join coaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, sir messaged and uh, he invited to join classes. We will see some scholarship program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, see if if the long term goal is UPSC, you have to start one day, right? It doesn't matter which this year or next year. But as as you said, Greek and Latin has to convert into English. It will take time, right? So slowly, slowly, keep keep reading every day, and one day, you know, it will start making sense. Yes. Everybody goes through this. Anudip Duri said, Titi Nadabi, you know, Kanishka Katariya, everybody must have gone through the same cycle. Uh, everybody will find it, uh, you know, like an ocean. It is very idiotic. We are not even understanding what, what is happening so vast. It's not like an ocean, sir. It's like a river only, but I'm afraid of water. Water, exactly. <laughs> Good. <laughs> nice. Hmm? So don't worry, keep reading and it will make sense. But you have to put some efforts. And it's like rocket, right? The initial friction will be there. We try to avoid that friction. But once you cross that point, automatically everything will become easy. Yeah. So again, I am on Telegram. If you are on Telegram, my username is Kalyans. Double Z, double Z. If you have any anything, uh, you can message me on Telegram. I will respond when time permits. Right? Yeah. If you don't have any questions, I will end the session here. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Nothing? Raja? Anything? Yeah. No? Not all at a time. Sir. Not all at one time. Okay. Online? Anyone? Uh, sir, hello. Yeah, yes, please. Sir, uh, you have shared us the document, uh, sir. Uh, like you have presented the document of uh, answer writing. Mm -hmm. can, uh, can we also uh, have that, sir? Uh, like, uh, we this will... one? Yes, sir. The specimen one? Ah, yes, sir. That's... Yeah, the questions and the specimen PDF, right? Yeah, I, I will yes. share it. Uh, I will share it with uh, Vijay, sir. He will share it with you, right? I don't, I don't have... Okay, sir access okay okay sure. yeah. yes, sir. thank you yeah sure by the way it's available on upsc official website also uh, sir, just, is, just... Is it the previous question uh previous question. Yeah, the... specimen copy it is under the section examinations in upsc official website specimen copy the copies are available question papers okay, are I'm available sure. in previous year questions okay, okay. Yeah, but I will share it. Nonetheless, I will share. You can message me on Telegram uh, if you are unable to find it. Okay. Yes, sir. sir. Also, uh, what will be the next class for? Uh, like you said, you'll be sharing us the one word questions, no, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, analysis. Okay. So uh, for tomorrow and after tomorrow, like upcoming days, uh, like how should we? Yeah. Again, uh, like, as I said, we get read newspaper on a daily basis. Okay. So, so uh, there must be a group or something or. Uh, uh, for your, your batch, right? I will share uh, the PDF in that group. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Yes. Something else? Okay, then. See you all on Monday.